All right, good evening, everyone. We'll get started in just a moment. Welcome to the Middlesex County Virtual College Fair, and thank you for joining us this evening. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Questions more broadly for all of our panelists or specific ones for institutions are certainly welcome. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions that's happening, so be sure to sign up for additional ones on the same website where you submitted your registration for this question. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available in about a week's time at the same website where you initially registered for this one. With that out of the way, I'd now like to welcome our first presenter, LaSalle University. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Just going to share my PowerPoint real quick. All right. Welcome to LaSalle University virtually. Um, I hope everyone is having a great night. My name is Bryce. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions here at LaSalle. Um, and thanks for coming tonight. So LaSalle is located on a 133 acre campus in Philadelphia. We are a Catholic university run by the Christian Brothers. Um, Christian Brothers are a group of men whose mission in life was education. So when you come to LaSalle, you have an international recognition, which is great. Um, also, if you're standing in the middle of our campus and look up, you would never know that you were in a city, but you get all of the amazing things that come with being in the city of Philadelphia, which I will say is an awesome place for college students. So at LaSalle, we are 100% faculty taught. Uh, we have about 3,200 undergraduate students. So we're a, a small, medium school and over 120 clubs and organizations. So you will never get bored. We have 18 Division I sports and plenty of things to do on campus. Um, our average class size is about 22 students. So you really get that personalized one-on-one -on -one attention, which is my favorite part um, of LaSalle. 44% of our undergraduates are ethnically diverse and we do over 60,000 hours of community service per year. So being our size, that's pretty great. Um, Another thing that's great to note is that 92% of our graduates are employed, volunteering full-time, or pursuing additional education within one year of graduation. So we offer 42 undergraduate majors, um, and we have three different schools. So there's the School of Business, the School of Arts and Sciences, and the School of Nursing and Health Sciences. So almost every single student is going to take a class in the School of Arts and Sciences. We have that practical liberal arts education. Um, so even if you don't have a major in the School of Arts and Sciences, you probably will exist in there. Um, these are all of our different programs within the School of Arts and Sciences. We have a wide variety of ranges here from religion to computer science, education, political science, the list goes on. In our School of Business, um, we are AACSB accredited, and we our main focus is on experiential learning. So we are all about hands-on experience. A lot of times our students, the internships that they get at the School of Business, um, through the School of Business, they often continue on into their career. So I will say that LaSalle is very much so, they prepare students for their future careers. And here are some of our programs within that. Um, the main one to point out is uh, we have a four-year BS to MBA, so you get your bachelor's and master's in four years in accounting, um, our business scholars co-op program as well. Nursing is probably one of our main programs at LaSalle, so that you would find in our School of Nursing and Health Sciences. Again, a lot of experiential learning. Um, our School of Nursing and Health Sciences is actually an old hospital, so your classrooms are in hospital rooms, and the front of the hospital is still an active hospital, so sometimes your clinicals will be just walking across the street. Um, your, you, we start clinicals first semester sophomore year as well. And here's our NCLEX pass rate. 
And I know I'm running close to time. So Philadelphia, I think one of the best cities, I mean, I am biased, such an awesome city for college students, so many amazing internships. And then for our nursing students, so many great healthcare facilities to work in clinical experience. Um, it's, an, it's a great city. Um, so a lot of our students, we say our Philly is the classroom and the playground. Um, that also goes into student life as well. Our students really utilize the city, but if they don't feel like, you know, branching out, there is so much to do on campus as well. Our students are guaranteed housing for four years. Um, that's an awesome thing, especially in a city. And everyone loves this. We are a dog friendly campus. So a pet friendly campus. So we have a dog friendly residence hall um, dedicated to dogs right here. This is Angus. He is our dog mascot. You'll always see him and other animals walking around campus. So if you haven't applied yet, go for it, please do. We are on Common App, we are a free application. Um, we require one letter of recommendation and all of our programs are test optional. Um, every single one is test optional. So even nursing, test optional. So definitely apply, um, especially since it's a free application. Every student also will receive some form of founder scholarship. So that's something to keep in mind as well. We also have all of these other scholarship opportunities, our community service scholarship, Christian Brothers, which is a full tuition, athletic scholarship, and then a legacy scholarship. If your parent went to LaSalle, you get an extra thousand dollars. And then FAFSA, <laughs> make sure you file your FAFSA. I'm sure I'm speaking for everyone when I say that. But thank you so much. Um, please follow our Instagram at LaSalleU underscore admissions and reach out if you have any questions. Again, my name is Bryce. Great. Thank you so much, Bryce. Our next presentation comes to us from the University of East Anglia. Thank you very much. Right, I'm just going to quickly share my screen with you now one moment. Okay. You should be able to see me all good now. Fantastic. Um, so I would say good evening to you, but it's actually good night from me here in the UK. Um, so my name is Graham. Um, I work for the University of East Anglia, also known as UEA. Um, so as you can see here, this is UEA. Uh, we're a campus-based university located in the city of Norwich in the east of the UK. Um, UEA, we're home to around 16,000, just over 16,000 students of which about 4,000 are international students. So it's very multicultural and a very diverse university. And as I said, we're a campus-based university. So that means that all of our facilities, including our accommodation is located on the exact same site, which is really convenient for undergraduate students. I'm just going to highlight a few of our key rankings at UEA. I'm not going to spend too much time doing this because every university can give their rankings and it will look really good on the things that they say. Um, just to highlight a few key ones that we rank very, very highly in the UK in the top 25, but also in the world as well, being ranked in the top 200, um, which is a good kind of recognition of um, the quality of, of the university. Um, also, the Teaching Excellence Framework, it's um, a kind of... Um, a ranking introduced in the UK uh, a few years ago to assess the quality of teaching at UK universities and UEA was awarded gold, one of around 20 universities to achieve that gold award. So again, it's a really good recognition of the quality of teaching that goes on at our university. So as I said, we're located in the city of Norwich and you probably won't know where Norwich is. So you probably haven't heard of Norwich before, um, but I'm incredibly biased because Norwich is actually my home city. So you probably can ignore everything I'm going to say about it, but it really is a beautiful city. And we're located about just under two hours from um, London and um, in the east of the UK, as I said. Uh, we're a coastal city and so the closest beach to our campus is about 30 to 40 minutes away so you've always got that right on your doorstep pretty much but Norwich is a great city it very much is a, a blend of the old and the new so we have our historical castles cathedrals um, and kind of medieval streets but we also have a brand new shopping centers cinemas and restaurants as well and um, so it's a really kind of student friendly city a very kind of welcoming place for students especially international students as well excellent for shopping very well connected to kind of cities like London and Cambridge, but most importantly, it's one of the safest cities in the UK, especially for international students. Um, so when you're coming to a, to a new country, a, a new city, uh, you know that being in Norwich, then you're a very safe place to, to live. So just to highlight our campus once more, um, so this is the kind of aerial shot of our campus. And as I said, we are a campus-based university. All of our accommodation is located on the same site. 
international students are guaranteed to be living on campus in their first year of study at UEA. So you're going to guarantee to be living in one of the options located on our campus. Um, we have a kind of state-of-the-art sports facility. I know in, in the US, sports are a really big part of your university experience. It's not so much as a big thing in the UK. However, we do have a really great facility for you to do lots of indoor and outdoor sports. And um, we have a live music venue on the campus as well, as well as lots of other great kind of amenities and facilities to really help you to make the most out of your degree at UVA. And one of those facilities is the Sainsbury Centre for Visual Arts. And um, so it's an art gallery located on our campus. Um, so if you're interested in kind of art from all over the world, then it's a great place to go to. But you may already recognise the Century Centre for Visual Arts because um, it doubles up as the headquarters of the Avengers. So it's featured in numerous Avengers films. And as you can see in the image in the bottom here, they actually came to our campus a few years ago to film one of the one of the films. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a cool thing to say that you've studied um, at the headquarters of the Avengers. And I like to mention it quite a lot. I'm kind of sick of mentioning it. I talk about it all the time. Um, so just to highlight some maybe not as interesting stuff, but also some equally important things as well. Um, so in terms of entry requirements, what we look for at UEA, um, we look for a wide variety and it's very bespoke in terms of what we're looking for for students. Um, so if you're taking IBs, then that's obviously makes things really easy. Same if you take A-levels as well. Um, overall, we do um, look for the high school graduate diploma and AP exams, usually three to five APs. Um, however, we do run, like I said, it's a very bespoke post process. So any student who wants to apply or is interested in applying to study at UEA will look on it a case by case basis. Um, so it's best to kind of reach out to myself or my colleague and we can look into that for you. Um, in terms of applications, they're all made via UCAS. Um, we don't accept common app applications. It's all directly to us by UCAS, um, which is a very simple application process, which you may be aware of. Um, you have to submit a personal statement along with your application. So with our undergraduate degrees, just to kind of touch on these briefly for you. So in the UK, um, there are three years in length. The only way they'd be longer is if you applied for a longer degree, such as medicine or pharmacy, which extended to four or five years, or if you chose to do a year abroad, which would then extend it to four years. Um, the key kind of component of UEA's undergraduate degrees is they're very flexible. Um, so what will happen is with our undergraduate programs, they often operate with a very common first year. So all the students will be learning all the key modules together. As you move forward into your second and third year, you'll then choose the modules that interest you um, most to really kind of tailor the degree to your own area of interest. Um, they're very cost effective at UEA. Um, so prices range from around 17,000 to 21,000 pounds per year. Um, and that does um, get brought down as well if you have scholarships. And we do have lots of kind of guaranteed scholarships for our international students. And we're best known at UEA for creative writing, international development and environmental sciences. But we have a real wide variety of other programs that students can apply to um, from business, psychology and lots of other areas as well. Um, just to touch on very briefly now, because I think I'm almost running at time now. Um, so we have lots of generous scholarships for international students from the US, um, ranging from four thousand to eight thousand pounds per year of study. Um, accommodation is very affordable, from you know, as you can see on screen here, around eighty pounds per week. Um, so about hundred or so dollars per week. So again, it's a very affordable place to live and to study as well. Um, and yeah, so just to highlight the social side of things, we have over 200 clubs and societies that students can join. I think it's close to 400 now, actually. So sports and social life are very much a big part of um, what it is to be a student at UEA. And it's something we really encourage um, all of our students, especially our international students, to get involved with, to help you feel at home and to help you kind of make the most out of your time studying at UEA. So I think I've pretty much hit my time. Um, so thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, obviously, I'm more than happy to answer those in the chat. If not, my email address is here, um, g.wise at uea.ac.uk. You can email me whenever you have any questions or if you're interested in studying in the UK in general, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, but yeah, I think that's all from me. So thank you very much for listening. Great. Thank you so much. Our next presentation comes to us from George Washington University. Yeah, thank you, Owen. And again, good afternoon, e evening, everybody. Hope you're enjoying uh, the fantastic snowfall that we all got here on the East Coast. Uh, my name is Dan Zawacki, one of the assistant directors at the George Washington University. Uh, like my colleagues here, we're going to roll through very quickly and talk a little bit about what GW is about. Uh, we are indeed located in downtown Washington, D.C., quite a city, never a dull moment, always something going on. Uh, while we are uh, not uh, under a military occupation uh, very often, um, 
for the uh, remainder of the uh, spring here semester, we've got a virtual semester going on at GW. Um, we're very pleased that uh, the recent events have been uh, settled and um, all of our students are safe and really getting a chance to really enjoy DC um, really properly because this city is very much uh, is our classroom, uh, much like our colleagues at LaSalle in Philadelphia. This is a place where you're going to be spending a lot of time in our campus, which is very centrally located in the downtown part of the district, and also spending a lot of time off the campus. Um, we uh, have a really deep connection with the beautiful National Mall. Uh, we really love the idea that we are the only school in DC that holds our graduation ceremony there on the mall. Uh, we are a place that absolutely utilizes our location just a couple blocks from the White House, uh, just a couple blocks from places like the World Bank and the World Health Organization. Uh, to really uh, provide some tremendous advantages when it comes to students uh, and what you want to do both on and off campus. Um, it is not a coincidence that about nine out of 10 of our students are going to conduct either an internship or a study abroad experience or some sort of guided research practice and do something outside of the classroom there. Uh, and then on the back end, you know, more than nine out of 10 of our graduates either have a job or they're in graduate school uh, or they're conducting formal service. You know, they're doing something that GW has helped prepare them to do. Um, we're incredibly proud of that. Um, but let's talk a little bit about uh, on our campus and the students that, that make us up. Um, we are really fortunate to attract um, students from all over the world, um, not just here in the United States, but indeed from about 130 different countries. Uh, GW is a solidly medium sized school, right? Just under 11,000 undergraduate students. Uh, average class size is in the 20s. We have a 13 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Uh, so definitely a place that really prides itself on elevating discussion, talking about discourse in the classroom, providing a really personalized experience when it comes to connecting not only to your professors, right, to the folks who are experts in their fields, who've been uh, researched and, and published uh, throughout their careers, uh, but also the classmates you're going to sit next to, right? Uh, we love that this idea at GW, so many of our students are the only person from their high school um, coming to, to GW and stepping into this really exciting new space surrounded by students who are just as sharp and driven and curious you know, about this world as you are. Um, so we love that you really get to spend a lot of time and in relatively small class sizes, really building off those different backgrounds uh, and really challenging each other to uh, succeed here. Being a major research university, a tier one research university, so that means we conduct about $500 million of outside funded research every single year here, um, we have a lot to offer when it comes to academics. I'm, I'm not really gonna dive too, too much into all these different majors, but between the different major programs and the minors that we offer, we have something like 150 to 160 different degree concentrations and combinations you can, you can do. Uh, and flexibility is really the name of the game here. You know, about half of our students here at GW uh, either double major or they major minor. It is a complex world full of really complex problems. And we like this idea that our students are really able to have a complex foundation of their education. And that's something that you really wanna do. Uh, that includes double majoring across school lines. That includes declaring minors across school lines. Uh, so it's absolutely something you can dive into while you're here and something that our curricula really, really supports. Uh, let's talk about student life. Uh, you spend a lot of time in the classroom, certainly in college, but you spend most of it outside of it. Um, like the other institutions here, we really put a huge emphasis on the community that you build. Um, we are a city school through and through, but we own everything in our five by four kind of campus grid. And we require students to live on campus through junior year. And because of that on-campus housing requirement, uh, at any given time, you know, about 9,000 of our students are living on campus. And so it's a really, really robust, high energy, high tempo kind of campus environment here. Uh, we have almost, you know, 500 some student organizations, which is fairly absurd for a school of our size. Uh, and it is definitely a kind of place at GW where students are used to being involved in high school. They're excited to come into this new space and continue to do the things that they love and find all those new exciting new things to do as well. Um, so whether it is Greek life or advocacy advocacy organizations, service-based organizations, certainly when it comes to professional organizations, pre-law societies, pre-med societies, uh, intramurals, the performing arts, you name it, it's happening here in Washington. Uh, and that really is the hallmark of the GW experience, uh, getting up in the morning, being really engaged with your classmates, going out there and accomplishing some pretty incredible things with your student organizations uh, as much as you are with your studies and with everything else. Um, I already talked about having this housing uh, on campus being a very com uh, community-based campus here, very residential campus. We do have two campuses. We have our main downtown Foggy Bottom campus. We also have our Mount Vernon campus, uh, which is just a couple miles away and still very much in DC, a much more traditional and idyllic kind of campus. And uh, we can unpack that you know, than when you come to one of our information sessions down the road. Um, we have a really unique dining plan at GW. We really encourage you to use this city certainly as a classroom, but certainly as a playground and as your campus. Um, we don't have 
a single dining hall or a cafeteria and instead have a dining plan lets you to 100 different places all over the city. You know, our students are really adept at budgeting and grocery shopping. So our meal plan works at places like Whole Foods and the Safeway on campus. Um, and they're also really adept at, at kind of an independent living. We have an apartment style housing for nearly all of our students, including our first year students. Um, so you're definitely going to gain a lot of those kind of adult skills before you graduate. Uh, and that, again, really translates to, to the great postgraduate success that our students have. Um, we're proud to have almost 300,000 alumni all over the world, uh, many of whom come back to campus and really mentor and connect with our students, certainly help get them internships, get them out into the, the field uh, that Washington has to offer you here. Uh, and as I said earlier, really proud that more than nine out of 10 of our students are, are doing something that GW helped prepare them to do once they leave us. Um, very quickly in the, on the application, we use the Common App. Um, we have early decision and regular decision. We do not have an early action deadline. Um, we also put a huge emphasis on financial aid, being a private research university in the heart of a city. Uh, our tuition and room and board is upwards of $75,000 a year. We know that affordability is really critical for making this place really work for students. And so our financial aid office works really hard uh, to make sure that we have merit scholarship awards as well as need-based financial aid uh, to make GW you know, an affordable option for, for you and your family. Um, so that does it for me. That puts me at time. Thank you all. and looking forward to answering your questions. Great. Thanks so much, Dan. As we're about halfway through our presentations, just a reminder that you can use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to ask questions of any of our presenters. Our next presentation comes to us from the University of Cincinnati. All right. Thank you. Let me get this shared. You guys can see my notes, but that's okay. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to fix it, but for time's sake, I'll just move on. Uh, my name is Erin Stahl Kiefer. I'm the Regional Enrollment Coordinator for University of Cincinnati. Um, I am based in New York, in uh, the Hudson Valley, New York, so just outside of the city, uh, right near New Jersey and Connecticut and Pennsylvania. Um, so I am your Northeast representative, and we are going to talk a little bit about uh, University of Cincinnati today. All right. So University of Cincinnati is a large public tier one research institution. So at GW, we're also a tier one research institution. We have about 46, just over 46,000 students in our entire population. So that includes undergraduate, graduate. Uh, we have three campuses. So it includes everyone on all of our campuses. Um, in terms of our main uptown campus, we have about uh, 27,000 undergraduate students. So again, a large institution, but with a large institution comes a lot of great resources for our students. Uh, we have over 350 academic programs. So with that, um, there's a lot to choose from. Just like uh, George was saying, we have uh, a lot of options for majoring, double majoring, minors, certificates, um, a lot of those different programs for students who have different interests. So um, again, with a large institution, you have those perks of many different resources and opportunities in your academic setting. Many students are surprised when they hear 27,000 undergraduate students to, to know that we have a 17 to one student to faculty ratio. So actually about 70% of your courses have 40 or fewer students in them. Um, and then only about three or 4% of courses um, will actually have a class size of over hundred students. So even though again, you're hearing 27,000 undergraduate students, you're not going to be just an, you know, another face in a crowd in the classroom. Um, the majority of your classes will probably have 50 to like 50 or 40 or fewer students um, in those classes with you. And within all those academic programs, uh, that's part of 13 different academic colleges spread across all three of our campuses. However, on our main uptown camp campus, which is where students from out of state are typically looking, um, those we have about nine of our colleges housed on that main campus. So in terms of experience and uh, really building your resume and your time at UC, that is extremely important to us. It's kind of the cornerstone of what we do. So we have something called the Bearcat Promise. The Bearcat is our mascot. Um, the Bearcat Promise is basically saying that we at the University of Cincinnati, we want you to graduate with not just a degree in, in your hand, but a degree in one hand and a plan. So when you come to UC, when you decide to enroll here, we're making a commitment to you that you're not just going to graduate you know, with your degree, knowing that this is what you wanna do um, when, you, when you do graduate, but you're actually going to have worked with many different people, different resources to have that career path, the, an idea of what's next when you do graduate. So you have a complete plan ready in place. Part of how we do that is through, our, through many of our experiential learning opportunities. 100% um, of our students participate in experience-based learning. 
Um, these are some of the ways that students will participate in experience-based learning. So co-ops and internships, um, cooperative co-op or cooperative education, if you're not familiar with the term, is similar to an internship, except it's required to be paid at UC. Um, and then we also, when students are on a co-op rotation, they're not taking classes. So if a student does a co-op for that semester are on co-op working full time, and then they'll switch back to doing uh, their courses in the next semester. Um, we also invent, we invented co-op in 1906, so it's a big part of the curriculum um, and the experience at University of Cincinnati. Uh, but co-op is a great way to kind of branch out into what the industry that you're thinking about that you want to do and kind of move on from there um, with an idea of where you might want to end up after. Um, internships, again, similar, but you can, they're not necessarily paid and you can also still do them while taking a full class load. Um, so that's a great option for some of our students who maybe don't want to do a full co-op. With co-op, you also earn on average about $10,000 per semester. Um, so it's a great way to help offset additional costs of college. Um, and co-op you can also do, you know, locally in the Ohio area, we're located in Cincinnati, Ohio, um, or you can actually do it anywhere in the United States and we even have a broad options for co-op. Other ways for doing experience-based learning, um, clinical rotations, if you're in the College of Nursing or College of Medicine, um, student teaching, of course, for our education students. Uh, we're huge on research, again, uh, artistic performances for our students in our College Conservatory of Music, um, and then service learning and study abroad are also great other alternatives um, and additions and opportunities for your experience-based learning at UC. Um, in terms of campus life and things to do outside of courses, we have over 500 clubs and organizations for students. Um, they really range from, you know, more fun clubs and organizations um, like ceramics or, you know, your chess team um, to any, you know, any sort of honor society um, within a major or other professional student level professional organizations. So there's a huge range there. We have Greek life on campus. Um, we also have division one athletics club and intramural sports. There's tons of ways to get involved um, in our campus community. We also have a number of um, identity based resources and staff um, staff centers that you can actually go to to uh, to use as utilize as another resource to kind of find your community at UC. The city of Cincinnati, um, we have over 400 Fortune 500 companies located within the city of Cincinnati. Uh, we're only about a mile, mile and a half from downtown Cincinnati, so it's a great opportunity for our students to get involved. Um, it's also a very affordable place to live. Uh, the cost of living is a great feature of being in the city of Cincinnati. Um, and then I'm moving quickly because I'm running out of time <laughs> with our admissions process. Uh, we have early action, which is December 1st deadline. That's also the scholarship deadline. Um, we're on Common App and we require transcripts and a letter of recommendation and we are test optional for fall 21 and fall 2022. Um, and that I think is about my time. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Erin. Our next presentation comes to us from SUNY Maritime College. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining. Just to quickly introduce myself, my name is Amira. I am an undergraduate admissions counselor here at SUNY Maritime College. I am also an alum. I graduated in 2018 with my degree in marine environmental science and double minored in marine biology and meteorology and oceanography. Just a brief overview about SUNY Maritime. We are one of the oldest SUNY campuses um, that exists within the SUNY wide, uh, basically um, interconnected system. We, are, we, have, we were established in 1874 and we are located in the Southeast section of the Bronx in a neighborhood called Throgs Neck. As you can see, we are located on a peninsula and our campus is 55 acres uh, of beautiful waterfront scenery. <laughs> So just to give you a brief overview about Maritime in regards to numbers, we have approximately 1,800 students. So we are a very small campus. 1,600 of our students are undergraduate students, while 200 of the rest are graduate students. We also do have 13 nationally recognized programs within science, engineering, business, as well as science, and um, sorry, and humanities as well. We have over 80 student organizations as well as clubs. Um, and this is great because since we do have a small student population, we do have a great extracurricular program for our students. 
we have 30 NCAA Division III varsity sports. And as you can tell by the student to teacher ratio, as well as the average class size, we do have those very small class sizes so that the professors and students get a great hands-on experience um, and a great relationship between the two. As mentioned before, these are a list of our undergraduate academic programs. We have five ABET accredited engineering programs within electrical facilities, marine and mechanical engineering, as well as, well as naval architecture. Our Bachelor of Science programs includes three business programs, which includes international transportation and trade, marine, oh, sorry, marine operations and marine transportation. Marine environmental sciences are only science degree and maritime studies is our only humanities degree. We do have an associates program in applied technology um, within marine technology. We do offer two fast track programs for our master's programs. One is our international transportation and management degree, which is our business degree. And then we do have our maritime and legal studies degree, which is our humanities uh, master's program. Both of these programs can be combined with an undergraduate degree to allow the student to complete um, a master's and undergraduate degree within five years. So we, to further talk about the experience about maritime, we do offer something called professional experience. That includes the US Coast Guard deck license, the US Coast Guard engine license, as well as the professional internship option. Within these different categories, the deck license and the engine license is something that students obtain in order to sail or work on a vessel. Uh, with this, there is no military obligation. It's similar to that of getting your driver's license. So instead of driving a car, you would essentially be driving a ship or working on a ship as well. For the professional internship students, those students are getting, getting an internship uh, once uh, in order to graduate. So you can pick one of these three tracks uh, to complete your degree. Then we do have something called the Regiment of Cadets as well as the civilian students. Um, within the Regiment of Cadets, uh, the students do have the option of going in the internship route or the license track. However, if you do choose to go the license track option, which includes the deck license to navigate a ship or the engine license track to actually work in the engine room of a ship, you have to participate in the Regiment of Cadets because this simulates what you will be doing in the real workplace aboard a ship. Civilian students, on the other hand, are not getting that license option, so they are free to be a typical college student. So they don't have to wear a uniform um, or wake up for morning formation or take specified classes for that license um, within the US Coast Guard. Up, uh, on the screen here, you can see our application information as well as our requirements. We do accept our applications on the SUNY app or the Common app. I suggest you apply using whatever is most comfortable for your guidance counselor to submit. Uh, with the SUNY app, there is just an additional application which differentiates whether or not you are interested in the civilian program or the regimental program. We do require an essay, your high school transcript, as well as your SAT or ACT scores and also one letter of recommendation. We are test optional for the fall 2021 semester or the application se uh, season, but that is likely to change. But as of right now, it is only applicable for the fall 2021 semester. For the, on the right-hand side of your screen, you can see the different requirements that we have for both the Bachelor of Engineering programs as well as the Bachelor of Science programs. This is a little bit higher than what we typically require for our students, uh, but this is to show the high caliber that of students that we do attract to our campus. For uh, for specifically for the Bachelor of Engineering program, that uh, pre-calculus is required uh, because we do want you to be on track for all of our uh, all of our math classes as well as our engineering classes as well. Although it is not required, we do also suggest that you have pre-calculus taken before you graduate high school for at least the Marine Environmental Science program. As of right now, our regular decision deadline is March 15th. It was extended from January 31st to March 15th. So if you haven't done so already, I suggest putting in your application. And that wraps it up for me. This is my contact information, including the email, my Calendly, so you can set up a Zoom, uh, Zoom conference, as well as my phone number. We are active on Facebook, Instagram, as well as Twitter. So if you have any questions, feel free to submit that in the chat feature, or you can contact me as well. Thank you.
Great, thank you so much. We'll have time for Q&A after our final presentation, which comes to us from New Jersey Institute of Technology. Okay, uh, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, for some reason, there we go. Just waiting for the video to come on. And my name is Debbie Gabadon. I'm from New Jersey Institute of Technology. Uh, there we go. Thank you so much, Owen. I appreciate it. And um, we are the um, state's polytechnic university. And uh, all of our programs are science and technology based. So we're always looking for students with very strong math and science backgrounds. And uh, this year, uh, we celebrated over 100 years of um, engineering for Newark College of Engineering, which is one of the largest and oldest schools of engineering in the country. When I think back to all I have accomplished, when I reflect on the relationships and connections I've made. Sorry about that. Not sure why, not sure why the glitch in the video. When I think back to all I have accomplished, when I reflect on the relationships and connections I've made, one thing always comes to mind. I owe it all to my time at New Jersey Institute of Technology. At NJIT, you can become a trailblazer a visionary, or the next great leader. Where do you see yourself? NJIT will get you there. As a top-ranked public research university, you will be immersed in an innovative environment that promotes cutting-edge research. Classes taught by expert professors and graduate with the technology skills needed to excel in the most in-demand careers. Expand your horizons by taking advantage of the extensive internship opportunities, opening up a world of possibilities gaining hands-on experience and preparing you for your future. Here at NJIT, you will get more than a world-class education. You will join a close-knit diverse community just eight miles outside of New York City. With technology as our foundation, a vibrant campus with hundreds of organizations, Division I sports, and access to a world of opportunity, you'll find a home at NJIT. My journey has been unforgettable and the experience, priceless. Your future starts here. New Jersey Institute of Technology, are you ready to join us? So again, Newark College of Engineering is one of the largest and oldest schools of engineering in the country. Um, it is ranked in the top 10% nationally. Uh, the College of Architecture and Design um, houses um, two degrees in architecture. Um, again, one of the top architecture schools in the country and our game design is ranked in the top 40 nationally. Our College of Science and Liberal Arts houses all of our research sciences, and we have over 90% placement into um, medical school, dental school, and our law school. All of those programs are offered accelerated. Um, the Martin Tuckman School of Management is ranked by Princeton Review as one of the um, top business schools in the country. And it also houses one of the top 50 entrepreneurial programs and we're the only school in all of North America that has a partnership with IBM. So students are able from their freshman year to benefit from the IBM Global University. So they're partnered with um, IBM professionals. The Albert Dorman's Honors College is one of the top 10 public honors colleges in the country. And the Yingwu College of Computing is one of the few colleges in the US um, entirely, entirely dedicated to computing majors and it's also ranked in the top 100 in the world. Um, we are an um, R1 Carnegie classified research university. So pretty much all of our majors, students are able to do research. So we have over 128 programs, bachelor's, master's and PhD programs. Um, students can start doing research in their freshman year. So the over 11,000 students have opportunities to um, start doing research programs in the freshman year and do specializations um, as well as combined master's programs.
Okay, no more videos for me. Um, and uh, our, we try to keep the classes really small. So student to teacher ratio is about 17 to one. But what's really important is that the majority of the professors hold the highest degree in their field. And we conduct millions of dollars um, in research. Students are able to partner with professors and departments. Um, we also offer grants and funding for students if you want to start your own research project. And um, as I mentioned for uh, Newark College of Engineering, um, the, we're the only one of the few schools that offered um, a school of engineering and technology. So students, again, are able to um, benefit from the partnerships with major corporations. Our tuition is a little over 17,000 a year. Out of state is about um, 33,000. I'll round up the room and board to um, 13,000. Very important for students to complete the FAFSA. Um, because the majority of the students are receiving some type of um, financial assistance and scholarships. And uh, we want to make sure that students are receiving um, financial aid. Uh, A's and B's in math and science uh, for students applying. We are test optional. Um, I visit every school in Middlesex County, so I will definitely um, be seeing a lot of you in the fall. You can make note of my contact information. Um, and you can always call or email me for um, more specific information um, regarding NJIT and um, all of the requirements as well. Great, thank you so much, Debbie. And thank you to all of our presenters for sharing your institutions with us. At this point, we will bring everyone back. Um, we have a few moments remaining and we've had some great questions in the Q&A and certainly feel free to continue submitting those if you're, you're interested in doing so. But before we wrap up, um, in the same order as our initial presentations, I'd like to hear from everyone um, a little bit kind of about your campus. Obviously, some are, are offering visits right now, some are not, but at some point people will get back to um, our college campuses. And I'm curious that what is one kind of thing that they need to experience when they come to visit your campus, a favorite event or tradition, um, something that really helps your, your institution stand out? Yeah, thank you. So we are currently doing um, on campus tours. We also will be having a admitted students event um, in hybrid in person and virtual um, towards the end of March and then mid April. So look out for that. Um, but when you come on campus just in a normal year, I mean, our homecoming event is amazing. I know that that is like one time experience and usually in a non COVID world. Um, but that really LaSalle is such a family. And I think that that's really something to harp on. Um, and you really feel the community when you come for these big events. Um, we're in a COVID climate, but even still, we're still trying to maintain that family aspect. And I think that's just one thing that you, you have to look forward to um, when you come visit LaSalle. Cool, thank you. So you, I don't expect you to come necessarily visit um, UEA in the UK. Um, if you did, obviously, feel free to give me a shout. But we do lots of virtual tours, um, which kind of replicate that experience for you. Um, I'd say one event that I really like on our campus is um, Derby Day, um, which is a sport event where we compete against the University of Essex, which is located about an hour or so from our campus. Um, two very kind of similar um, ranked universities competing against each other in a series of sports. One year it's at our campus, the next um, year it's at their campus, and we've actually won it six times in a row. It's a really great social experience, so all the students who aren't taking part in the sport will come and watch and cheer on their university. Um, so it's a great social experience um, combining two really big universities in the UK. So yeah, I'd say Derby Day is um, my favorite event on UEA's campus. Yeah, much like uh, everyone else, GW is currently not offering full uh, on-campus tours and not welcoming visitors, but we hope to be able to do so perhaps later this summer as the uh, COVID vaccine gets more widely distributed. Uh, one of my favorite traditions on campus is, uh, is the rubbing of the hippo's nose. So our official mascot is a George Washington himself, is a, uh, a George suit. Um, but we also have an unofficial mascot, which is this fabulous, gigantic bronze hippo statue um, sitting around right in the corner of H and 20th streets right outside my office. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's a pretty, it's large, it's life size, right? You can, you can ride on the back of this thing and many of our students do, especially in their graduation photos. It's a great uh, pick to take with your family, um, but its jaws are also wide open. And uh, over the years, students absolutely have used it as a good luck totem on the rub its nose 
uh, for luck during finals. They'll leave offerings in its jaws, whether it be food, whether it be candle lighting ceremonies, what have you. Um, and so that's always a really good one for me, um, especially after our midnight breakfast program. Um, so during finals week, especially when students are, are feeling the stress a little bit um, inside our basketball arena, we'll have a, a you know, gigantic carnival kind of atmosphere, lots of inflatables, lots of games, uh, lots of pancakes, lots of food you can eat there. Um, and a lot of students take that food right over to the hippo uh, to make sure they get, you know, the A on that exam they're working on. So University of Cincinnati, um, we do have coming up, I guess, next week, I think we're starting some in-person tours again, um, all pending COVID. <laughs> um, but we do have some self-guided options available for students. And then we have many virtual options available. Um, we do typically in the spring semester, although I don't know that it'll really be happening this spring semester, at least not in its original form, a tradition where we have some, an event called World Fest. Um, it's an event put on by our Ethnic Programs and Services Office, and it's a celebration of all of the students at University of Cincinnati that make up UC. Um, it's a really amazing way to learn more about the different um, backgrounds and cultures of your fellow Bearcats. Um, and it's actually really, it's just a really fun event um, with amazing food, um, great music, great performances. And I just think it, it's a, a way to make a, a large you know, student population feel a lot more um, like a small community when you get to see the students in that, in that light. And it's just a fun, a fun evening. So um, hopefully that'll be available for students to come back and, and visit soon. I definitely know from Maritime, the one thing that's like great for all of our students to participate in is uh, Fall Fest and Spring Fest, which, ha which happens in the middle of the semester, probably towards closer towards finals time. So it gives us students enough time to relax and calm down, just have like a great break before they go into finals. Something else that's great for our students is something called Muggoween. It's something that allows the freshman students who are coming into the regiment to decorate different wings of their buildings. Um, typically they have a theme. So one year we had Disney princesses, we had, did a Greek theme um, and everyone pretty much decorates their own dorm rooms as well. So it's great to get everyone's interest and have a great laugh. Um, so everyone gets to participate and vote on the best wing per se. So the freshmen will decorate everything and then the upperclassmen will get to go around and basically vote on their best one. One of the fun things that um, we have on campus is our um, Highlander games. And um, we had an O2 Sean Connery, the original Highlander. And uh, for those of you who don't know, the Highlander is one of the most powerful immortals to ever live. Um, they're on NJIT campus. So they have the Highlander games where students compete. Um, and we also um, are having uh, campus tours so students are able to come family groups um, onto our um, campus. We'll have this throughout the spring. And um, we are also having um, guided tours and self-guided tours uh, as well. So if um, any student is interested, since you are all um, in New Jersey, not that far away, definitely schedule an appointment to, um, to come to one of our um, campus uh, tours. It's njit.edu slash visit. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of our presenters for sharing your institutions with us and to all of you for joining us. When this webinar ends, there will be a link to a quick four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback that you can provide. And also just a reminder that this was one of many sessions being hosted this evening. So be sure to sign up for additional ones on the same website where you initially registered. On that same site in about a week's time will be a recording of this sessions and all other ones. Thanks so much and have a great night.